first cafe opened at nine o'clock, I went and had coffee and toast. I hadn't slept all night and I felt appalling. But I was so afraid that Dad had sent someone to chase after me that I didn't dare stay sitting for very long in case someone should find me. Even when it was time for the bus to leave, I still felt afraid that someone would come and haul me off it. Last stop. Looking out of the window, I could see no sign of Eugene. Last stop, miss. Um, what time do you go back to Dublin? Five o'clock. I decided to go to Eugene anyway. And I had only walked half a mile when I saw a tall black-coated figure walking across the field. At first I thought it was a priest. Hello there. Oh, oh, they took me away. They wouldn't let me leave. The whole village was against me, everyone talking. And they kept my letters. Baba sent me money and they kept it. And a priest tried to make me swear that I'd never let my thoughts dwell on you again. Uh, and did you swear? I did not. Good girl. But if they find me here, I'm afraid they'll kill me. Kate, Kate, this is the 20th century. Not to them. Well, you're all right now. You're here now. Yes. You look exhausted. No. Oh. I haven't slept all night. I'll cook you a big breakfast and then you can go to bed, all right? All right. And don't worry, we won't let them kill you. I can't sleep. I'm frightened. There's nothing to be frightened of. A Jehovah's Witness was stabbed in 29 places with a penknife in the village next to ours. His face wrinkled with pain. And I knew I had said the wrong thing because he was very fastidious. But close your eyes and don't think about Jehovah's Witnesses. Do you want to get into bed with me? I do not. But why? When we make love to one another, it will be because we want to. But I do want to. You do? For the wrong reasons. You want to involve me, that's all. You know that once I've made love to you, I'll feel responsible for you. Oh, please don't get cross with me. I'm not. I'm really not. Have I got to leave you then? Well... I've been thinking that the wisest thing to do would be for you to go away. Go away where? Don't get all anxious again. I'm not abandoning you to the wolves. I'll give you the money to go to London for a week or two, and then when everything has calmed down, you can come back. I don't want to leave you. Please don't make me leave you. Oh, Kate. What? Look, if we both stay here, they can come here and force you to leave. If we both go to London, they could have the police after us. If you go to London and they come here... I can talk to them calmly without things getting out of hand. And they can't accuse me of kidnapping you or some nonsense. It'll only be for a couple of weeks. All right. When the summer comes, I'll teach you to swim in the lake. Could your wife swim? My wife? When she was here, did she swim in the lake? Yes. Why? I don't know. I just wondered. You funny thing. Can we lock all the doors tonight? If you like. And tell Anna not to answer the door? There's no need to involve Anna. What if we just kept the shotgun in the bedroom? The shotgun? The one in the hall. Kate, for goodness sake. I'd feel safer. I wouldn't, sleeping with a bloody shotgun. Sorry, I just thought. <laughs> you do enjoy the melodrama, don't you? No, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> Tomorrow, we'll drive to Collins Town and I'll put you on an aeroplane. I had never been on an aeroplane and I was worried about being strapped down. Baba said that they strapped you to your seat. I prayed that something would prevent me from leaving. And that night it did. It's them. It's them. Oh, they'll break the door down. How dare they? We won't answer. Oh, in God's name, to what are yeah, We've come for the girl. I don't know uh, anything about that. Wait outside. But whoever it was must have walked straight past her. This is beyond endurance. Oh, Eugene, what do we do? I'm going to go speak with them. What are you going to say? Stay here. I ran to the study and looked for somewhere to hide. I imagined he would take them to the sitting room, so I crawled under the spare bed. Where is my only child? Where is she? I can't answer that, I'm afraid. Why the devil can't you answer that? Bring us the bearer now! Why don't we all go to my study for a chat? A chat? A chat he works, huh? My heart sank as they all trooped into the room where I was hiding. Right. One of them was Tom Duggan, a.k.a. the ferret. And the other two were Jack Holland and my cousin Andy. Andy sat on the bed and the springs touched my back. I could smell the cow dung on his boots. 
I thought I was going to suffocate. Don't you think it's a little late for all of this? Where is she? I want to know where she is. We want that poor innocent girl. And by God, if there's a hair strainer, you'll pay the effort. Uh, Allow me to make introductions. My name is Mr. Holland. Mr. Jack The divorced man old enough to be her father, carrying off my daughter. I am not old enough to be her father, and she's a grown woman. 21 is not a child, and I did not bring her here. She came by herself of her own free will. Free will, huh? Yes, her own free will. You got her with dope. Everybody knows that. I thought of how odd and immoral Eugene must look to them, in his corduroy trousers and his old check shirt. I hoped that all his buttons were done up. Are you a Catholic? No. Do you go to Mass? Why would I go to Mass if I wasn't a Catholic? Do you meet on Fridays? God help Ireland. Uh, We'll have none of that blasphemy. Uh, What about a drink to calm us down? Well, a sip of port all round might be conducive to negotiation. Uh, Could I have a glass of water to take an aspirin? Good idea. I'll join you in an aspirin. I thought for a minute that things were going to be all right. Water was poured, aspirins were taken, but then... I'd like you to realise that your daughter's escaping you. I'm not abducting her. She's running away from you and your way of living. What the hell is he talking about? Yeah, they, they get girls with dope. Yeah. Many an Irish girl ends up in the white slave traffic in Piccadilly. <laughs> foreigners running us all... Foreigners! Where's your wife, mister? Mm. Would you answer that? What are your intentions? I haven't any intentions. I suppose in time... I, I would like to marry her and have children, who knows? Ah, the patter of tiny feet. Shut up, Jack. You're making a fool of yourself. Uh, Why don't you go down to the village and stay in the hotel for the night and then come up in the morning? Oh, your bloody life. We'll not go without her. I lost heart then and knew that there was no escape. They would find me and pull me forth. We would go out into the wind and sit in the ferret's car and drive all night with my father raving at me. If only Babber were here, she'd find a way to get me out of this. We can have her put away. She's not all there. Mental. Reading yeah. books and talking to trees. Yeah. What about that, mister, huh? A very serious offence having to do with a mentally affected girl. My head boiled. I wanted to scream. They'd make a goat ashamed. Why was I such a coward as to stay under the bed? Go and get her now. I want you to leave my house. All of you. Leave my house or I'll call the police. I heard the first smack of their fists. Then they must have knocked him over. Eugene was on the floor, and Andy and the ferret were hitting and kicking him. Jack Holland was trying to hold them back, and my father held the back of Jack's coat and was saying, Keep over, Jack, you fool. Keep over. Ah! Stop! Stop it! What are you doing? Stop! Then the study door flew open, and Anna was stood there with a shotgun. Oh. Holy God! There's another one in it, and next time I won't miss. Next time I'll blow your bloody brains out. I will. My God. Oh, yeah, I'm getting out of this. These people are killing you. Dangerous savages. Oh. She might have killed us. You're lucky she didn't. Get out. Get out now. Never come inside my gates again. Have you a drop of whiskey before we leave? No. You must leave my house immediately. A pretty night's work. Huh? A pretty night's work. The last thing I saw was the ferret's hooked hand being shaken back at us. That's the way to handle them. Anna, you saved my life. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Oh, your face, your nose. I'll get some iodine. It was terrible. It was terrible and ridiculous, like this country. I shouldn't have eaten. I shouldn't have come here. Go get yourself a drink to stop you shaking. (laughs) Fetch me one, too. (sighs) I knew he would never forget what had happened and that some of their conduct had rubbed off on me. I came downstairs in the morning. Anna was sitting in the kitchen reading the newspaper. She's the image of Laura. Who? This heiress. Is she? Look, just like her. Oh. Will you be able to cook the rabbit? The rabbit? I'm going out later and I won't have time to get it started. Oh, um, all right. There's a cookbook if you need it. All right. What star sign are you? Sagittarius. Do you want to hear your horoscopes? All right. She read out mine, then her husband's, then the baby's, then hers, then Eugene's, and then Laura's. She included Laura in everything, so by the time she went out, I had a feeling that Laura was due back at any minute. Do you want to take him his tea? All right. Is it all right? That's nice. He lay there like Christ sipping his tea. 
his head resting on the mahogany headboard. How are you? I think my nose is broken. No. Luckily, I don't earn my living with my nose. I'll make love with it, for that matter. (laughs) I'll be contacting my solicitor today. Solicitor? Of course. You have to, I suppose. Indeed I do. The cookery book had belonged to Laura. Radishes, ragu, raisin bread, raisin pudding, prayer bit, raspberries. There was no mention of rabbit. I'll go tomorrow. Go? Where will you go? I might go to London. Do you want to? No. (laughs) Then why are you going? I don't know what else to do. You can stay here. That wouldn't be right. Why wouldn't it be right? Because it would be me throwing myself at you. I'll go away and then when I'm gone you can write to me. Supposing I don't want you to go away. Then what? I wouldn't believe it. He raised his eyes to the sky then, in mild irritation. On the ceiling there was a circle of wrecked plaster from Anna's gunshot. Why do you want me to stay? Because I like you. Because I'm lonely. Because I've lived like a hermit for so long. Why are you crying? I don't know if the rabbit will be nice. The rabbit? I put it on. I don't know if it's right. There wasn't anything in the book. Oh, Kate. Kate. Kate, stay. All right. I will. It's very good. Oh, I'm glad you like it. The rabbit meat had fallen gradually away from the bone. The potatoes were crushed in the flour-thickened sauce and the meal tasted very nice. Herbs. Mm. I'll buy you a ring so that the neighbours don't bother you. But we can't actually get married because I'm not divorced. I know. The truth is that I don't intend to get married ever again. Oh. Don't look so dismayed. Sorry. My mother met my father in the middle of the street. He was a visiting musician, tall, dark, foreign, on his way to buy a French-English dictionary, and very courteously he asked my mother if she could direct him to the bookshop. I'm the product of an accidental encounter. He left us when I was five years old. Oh, do you remember him? I remember him coming home with a fiddle and a bag of oranges. Your turn. My turn? Tell me something you remember. Oh, um... Uh, uh, eating bread and sugar on the stone step of the back kitchen. Um, oh, uh, drinking hot jelly, which had been put aside to cool. Mama was in America when she was young, and she used to use some um, American words like uh, applesauce and sweater, dessert. <laughs> I watched the grease settling on the dinner plates, and, and I sat that there that talking that to Eugene as I had never talked before. And I felt a wild, sinful happiness. And you say these people assaulted you, Mr. Guyard? Yes, they did. And did you witness the assault, Miss Brady? Well, I heard it. I heard everything, but I didn't see it because I was hiding under the bed. Under the bed? She means the spare bed in my study. She hid under the bed because she was afraid. I see. What is your father's Christian name, Miss Brady? James. And the names of the other men? Tom Duggan, Andy Ferris and Jack Holland. But Jack Holland didn't actually hit Mr. Guyard. <laughs> it didn't do much to stop them. He tried. Barely. And my father, my father didn't hit anyone either. <laughs> that was more luck than judgment. I'll need addresses too. Do you have to do it? Do what? Write to them. That's why he's here. I know. But what? I feel badly... Why? Because I'm the reason you're sending them solicitor's letters. You should feel badly about the state of my nose, my ribs and the cut on my shin. I do, I do. I feel badly about that too. I'm afraid it has to be done, Miss Brady. It's just a warning. It's just routine. It's just routine. It's routine, all right. All right. Now, you're quite certain that you're over 21, aren't you, Miss Brady? Yes, I'm quite certain. (laughs) 
The solicitor left shortly after four, and I waved the moving motor car out of habit. Well, they won't trouble us again. They'll always trouble us. Well, at least they'll have to accept it. But two mornings later, I had a wretched letter from my aunt. Can I read it to you? If you must. Dear Kathleen, none of us has slept a wink nor eaten a morsel. I doubt that's true. We are out of our minds to know what's happening to you. Such a fuss about nothing. If you have any pity in you, write to me and tell me what you're doing. Don't answer it. But she's worried. About what exactly? It's this bit, she says. You know you will always have a welcome here when you come back. Your father does nothing but cry. I must answer it, Eugene. This sentimentality will get you nowhere. It's not sentimentality. Once you've made a decision, you've got to stick to it. It feels cruel. Yes, and kicking me with hobnail boots is cruel. If you write to them, they'll come here again, and this time I'll leave you to deal with them. The next day we went to Dublin, and I was nervous about seeing anyone I knew. Eugene bought me a wide gold ring, and then we went for lunch at a hotel. In the cloakroom, I washed my hands, and the ring shone so much that I could see my face in it. Towel, miss. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's a beautiful ring. Oh, do you think so? I got married today. Oh, miss, miss, I wish you a long life of happiness. Oh. I longed to tell her the truth and have her assurances that I'd done the right thing, but that would have been ridiculous. That ring has to last you a long time. How long? As long as you keep your girlish laughter. (laughs) And if I keep it forever? If you keep it forever, you will make me a very happy man. To us. To us. You look delicious. Thank you. I could eat you like an ice cream. In certain lights and in certain moments, most women look beautiful. That light and that moment were mine. That night he made love to me for the first time. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. For days he had told me to say this to myself, to persuade myself. Kathleen Brady. Kathleen Brady. Kathleen Brady. Afterwards, I lay there astonished with myself. It was very strange being part of something so odd and so comic, and I thought of how Baba used to hint about this particular situation. We had not bothered to draw the curtains. You're a ruined woman now. I suppose I am. (laughs) I was joking. I know. Well, a new incumbent. More responsibility, more trouble. I'm sorry. It's all right. I wouldn't throw a nice girl like you out of bed. I wondered what he really thought of me. I was not sophisticated, and I couldn't talk very well or drive a car. I'll try and get sophisticated. How will you do that? I'll cut my hair and buy tight skirts and wear a corset. (laughs) I don't want you to wear a corset. I just want to give you nice babies. But you said we wouldn't have babies. Don't panic. We won't. We won't. Not now. Not yet. Oh, But one day it would be nice, wouldn't it? Yes. One day. But babies terrified me. I remember the day that Bab first told me about breastfeeding, and I felt sick. I felt sick again now, just as I had done that day when Bab and I were walking across the field eating a packet of sherbet. It'll all come out all right in the end, Kathleen. I know. We must enjoy this time. This is our honeymoon. Are you hungry? No, just sleepy. I was a good girl, wasn't I? You were a marvellous girl. It's not so terrible. Do you love me? <clears throat> Do you love me, Eugene? Ask me in ten years' time when I know you better. I'll no more chat out of you, Miss Potbelly. <clears throat> he was asleep almost before he had finished speaking. I did not expect to sleep, but I did. The days took on a happy, lazy pattern, and no one bothered us for a whole month. Then Baba arrived unexpectedly and brought the body with her. 
She was wearing a green jacket which I had left behind at Joanna's. And the body came in full of welcome for himself. And he took a bottle off the sideboard and drank from it. What the devil was that? Cow's urine. Cow's urine? <laughs> Why didn't you tell me? You didn't give me the chance. Lord in heaven. <laughs> What are you keeping cow's urine in a whiskey bottle for? You she must have taken to the vet this afternoon. <laughs> it's not funny. <laughs> Baba. Eugene. How are you? Not so bad in yourself. I'm practically a married man. I thought you were a married man. Baba. What have you done to yourself, Kate? You don't look the same anymore. Really? She's just wearing less makeup, that's all it is. Take a seat. Uh, uh, thank you. Eugene offered to the body a chair. Not a soft armchair, but a straight back chair. He had told me not to encourage fat people to sit in the armchairs because they were old and might fall to pieces. Life with Eugene came with many rules. Would you like some tea? Yes, please. Never mind the tea. Tell us what happened. When? When your father showed up. I almost got kicked to death by a rabblement of drunken Irish farmers. The body winced, and I could see him thinking, what is Kathleen doing with a cynical bastard like this? Look! It's a luscious scab to would win a prize. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, um, uh, yes, um, Mr. Guyard, would you like to show me the outhouses and we could both get a breath of air? Certainly. Since Baba and I have come all this way to the country? Of course. Hey, did you ever hear that one about the woman who took her son to Killarney stayed in a big hotel? No. Monty, Monty, she said. Take big gulps of the air. We're paying for it. Uh. Well, you're in a nice mess. I am not. Are you fixed up yet? Pregnant, you mean? Are you married, you idiot? I've got a ring. Let's see. It's nothing fancy. I like it. You would. You're wearing my jacket. This all rag? So thin you could strain milk through it. Did you bring my clothes? What clothes? There are no clothes except a few oh. dishcloths that Joanna gave to the ragman in exchange for a bicycle saddle. They were my clothes. Gustav goes to work on your old bicycle. He'll break his bloody neck one day. You should see him. I want it back. I doubt you'll get it. But it's my bicycle. Your old fella's writing to me every day to try to get you to go back. Is he coming? You know he'll come one fine day when he's blotto and shoot the lot of you. And then he'll start singing, I didn't know the gun was loaded and I'll never, never do it again. You haven't changed a bit. Why would I? So what are you doing with yourself these days? Having a whale of a time out every night. I was at an ice show last night and the body and I are going to a dinner dance tonight. Oh, and... Someone wanted to paint my picture last week. I met him at a party and he said I had the nicest profile he ever saw. So, the next day I went along to his den and he wanted the picture in the nude. I said to him, what has nude got to do with your profile? You should have seen how fast I ran. Oh, Baba! How long are you staying in this bar? Oh, I don't know. Chilly gets tired of you, I suppose. Is there any grog in this house? There was a bottle of whiskey hidden in the gun bureau, but I didn't want to open it, as it wasn't my house. Eugene didn't open it when he came back, and they left soon after, probably because they were not offered a drink. By the way, your dad is bringing the bishop next time. I thought she was joking, but the next day I saw the ferret's car drive up to the house with my father in the back seat. It's them! It's them! They're back! Get away from the window. Dada came to the door and called through the letterbox. Kathleen! Kathleen! If he's on his own, maybe we should see him. God, there's three others in the car. And one of them's that thug that you all call the rat. It's the ferret. What? He's not called the rat, he's called the ferret. So whatever he's called, he's a violent moron. Looks like there's a bishop with them too. Bishop? Eugene could see better than me since he was looking through binoculars. There's your father, the ferret man, someone else and a bishop. Maybe we should go out to them. Not in your life. Well, they can't hurt you in front of a bishop. Oh, I'd rather not risk it. What'll we do then? What should we do? Well, I'll settle it. How? Eugene put the chain on the front door. Mr. Guyard, it's Mr. Brady. Remember me. Why are you here? I want to speak with Kathleen. Anything you need to say to your daughter, you'll have to say in writing. I want to see her. Well, she doesn't want to see you. The words sounded very cruel when he put it bluntly like that. I just want to have a chat with her. Is she there? Is she listening? Kathleen, can you hear me? Think of your poor drowned mother, Kathleen. What must she be thinking looking down from heaven? I did not want to think about my mother or how she died. Tell Kathleen I have a friend of hers here, Bishop Jordan. He knows her since she was a child. 
He confirmed her. We won't lay a finger on her. Look, Mr. Brady, I've written to you through my solicitors. I do not want you here, and I do not want any Monsignors meddling in my affairs. I thought that we'd made that clear. But we're not doing any harm. You're trespassing on my property. Well, you think you're very important. But this is our country. And you can't come along here and destroy people who, who, who've lived their whole lives here for generations. Don't think that... Eugene, shut the door on him. Kathleen! <sighs> Kathleen! Kathleen! Oh, poor Dada. Poor Dada. After a few minutes, I saw the car driving off. He looked through the back window as they drove off. And for the rest of the evening, I cried and disliked myself for having been so cruel to my father. Why don't you take an aspirin? <laughs> Will you take me to Mass tomorrow? Of course I'll take you to Mass, you poor little pigeon. I haven't been for five weeks. Five weeks? Oh, Lord, you'll burn in hell. I believe in hell. Well, I don't. I can feel the goodness draining out of me. Oh, Kate. Do you believe in God at all? Not when I'm sitting with a pretty girl in my own house beside my own fire. I may do when I'm driving at 80 miles an hour. It varies. That's a peculiar answer. Is it? You must be afraid of something. I never said I wasn't afraid. So what are you afraid of? Just bombs. But not hell? No, not hell. Hell is my greatest fear. <laughs> Why is that funny? Poor frightened Kate. You've got no shoulders, that's the problem. <laughs> that's true. They're frail and sloping like my mama's. I'll take you to church tomorrow and you can pray to your mama and pray away your sins and feel all that goodness returning to your blood. How would you like that? I would like that. I'd like it a lot. Eugene's mother came to lunch most Sundays and she was already there when we returned from Mass. Where have you been? Kate wanted to go to church. Oh. She's still a convent girl at heart. I'm not really. She prayed so fervently that she forgot I was waiting outside for her. Oh, don't tell your mother that. She'll be impressed by your devotion. She did not look remotely impressed, but she did say... I brought you a gift. Oh, thank you. It's a wedding present. Oh. It's a hand-embroidered tray cloth. Oh. It's lovely. Thank you. Shall we have a sherry to celebrate our marriage? Uh, yes, please. That would be nice, yes. I didn't know if Eugene's mother really thought we were married or whether she knew it was all a charade. There's chopped onions in this sauce. Is that wrong? You know I can't stand chopped onions. Oh, I didn't. I, I didn't know that. I want my tray cloth back, please. Sorry? The cloth. I want it back. Uh, now? Before I leave. All right. What did I always say to you, Eugene? Mother. Never trust a red-haired woman. I think you like the dessert. She did it on purpose, knowing they will make me bilious. It's orange mousse. How can I trust that either? Well, you can be sure there won't be onions in it. I'll have bread and butter and forget the mousse, if it's not too much trouble. Certainly. Things have come down here a lot. Yes, well... Laura might have been an adventuress, but she knew how to entertain. I'll fetch you your bread and butter. How could I know that onions make her bilious? <laughs> it's not funny. Sorry. How could I know that? You couldn't. So why did she think I did it on purpose? It's your red hair. What's my red hair got to do with it? Look through the keyhole. What is it? She's eating the orange mousse that she spurned. Oh. She'll see us all to our graves. I guarantee it. And she took the tray cloth back. Come here. What? I want to kiss you. While we were kissing, a car drove up. Who's that? Simon. Oh. What did you say your name was? A Simon. Lucky you didn't arrive in time for lunch, Simon. Oh, was that? Things went wrong with the food. Did they? Chopped onions in the grave. Oh, dear. It was Kathleen's fault. Mm. Would anyone like some tea? Yes, please. I'll give you a hand if you like. Oh, you needn't. Oh, I'd like to. Give us a chance to chat. He was a poet who called all women cows. A fat cow, a thin cow, a frigid cow, a nice cow. 
and I didn't want to be alone with him. Well, here you are, shining quietly behind a bushel of Wicklow bran. You pinched that off of James Joyce. Who the hell is James Joyce? Would you like to butter those slices of currant cake? <clears throat> I would love to butter those slices of currant cake. And the knives are in the drawer. Tell me, Kate. What? Is Eugene any good in bed? Sorry? <laughs> Your face. And um, there's plates in the cupboard. Have you ever tried to measure it? Measure what? Measure what? <laughs> measure what? Oh, you're a funny cow. Did you know that, Kathleen? He said my name too often and was affable and ugly as wicked people often are. How's old Eugene's work going? Any epics coming up? I don't think so. He needs to have a drink with someone at MGM. Persuade them to let him direct a Hollywood romance. He says that what matters is to have a conviction about your work. He'd like to compile a long chronicle about the injustice and outrage done by one man to another throughout the ages. But he says no one would want to watch it. He's right. They wouldn't. The outrage done by one man to another. Ugh. You know, Laura would love that. Laura? You haven't met her, have you? No. Well, soon you'll get your chance. What do you mean? Hasn't he told you? Is she coming here? There'll be a hot time in the old bed when she arrives. Have you seen her? Oh, wow. Now, what about some lemon for my tea, Kathleen? It's over there. The lemon looked brown and wrinkled in the bowl. My legs were trembling. Do not forsake me, oh my darling. I'd seen photos of Laura and photos of their child. Elaine eating bread and jam in high chair, written on the back. It distressed me to look at them. Old Heathcliff is still a bit gone in there, you know. Will you bring the cake in? <laughs> You've got a clever tear in your eye. It's clever because it's not real. I'm a poet and I know these things. I was longing to escape him. After you. Got a nice little ass, Kathleen. Did you know that? Fruit cake, anyone? Oh, you brought the wrong cups. They'll do, won't they? No, 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 no. It's Sunday afternoon and we're entitled to nice cups. What could you expect from country girls fresh from the box? Sit down, dear. Excuse me. Where are you going? The garden. In the garden I remembered, as one does in a temper, the ugly side of Eugene's nature. The day he shouted, you're a mechanical idiot who can't even turn off a tap or run upstairs on your peasant legs. But that hour I hated him. For a while, I welcomed the fact that one day I would be old and dried and no man would torment my heart. They've gone. They've all gone. I didn't mean to offend you. I just thought the cups looked awful and that Mother would complain and that we might as well get better ones. Cups don't matter as much as people. Of course they don't. I know that. You don't know any nice people. Anyone sincere. <laughs> my dear child, there are no nice people. Not wholly nice. That's not true. And that man, Simon, is a strange friend to have. He isn't a friend. But in this country, there are so few people one can talk to. Sometimes I'm grateful for any friendly enemy who can speak my own language. He says that Laura is coming. Really? Did you know? Know what? That she was planning to come here. I'll believe it when I see it. You don't think she's coming? I'd be amazed. Then why did he say she was? To cause trouble. Oh. Later, we went for an evening stroll. In the village, I heard piano music from the lounge of the one hotel, and it made me lonely for all the gay nights with Baba. I'd love to go into the hotel. No, you don't want to go in there. Just for one drink. As you wish. Will you sing for us? Do you know any of these people? One or two. Will you sing for us or not? I don't sing. You mean you won't sing? I can't. Everybody can sing, everybody. <clears throat> well, not me. What about the girl? Me? Yes, you, miss. Will you sing? I don't have a very good voice. <laughs> she doesn't sing either. Is it because you're pagans? <laughs> the drunk man hummed a few bars of the old bog road and held his cap out so we could put money in it. I felt the blood rising in my neck as I prayed that he would go away and leave us alone. Drink your drink. He forgot the soda. What? The barman forgot to put the soda in it. 
can't drink it straight. I can't drink whiskey straight. It tastes awful. It tastes fine. Please, can we just go? Look, I'll finish your whiskey and then we'll go. <laughs> Buy us a beer, will you? Why should I? Because you're a rich man. I'm not rich. You're rich, 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 but you never buy anyone a drink. Adrian, I want to go. And now you've ditched the yank and moved on to this poor young Irish innocent. It's none of your damn business, is it? <laughs> Suddenly the man flicked my wool beret off and it fell onto the table and overturned my drink. All right, we're leaving. Yes, please. Pagans! Pagans! You're a pair of pagans! <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not your fault. It was my idea to go in. All right, then. It's your fault. I'm sorry. They were Stone Age people. I never thought it would be so... I don't know what I thought. It's funny, isn't it? What? The difference between fantasy and reality. When I met you those first few times in Dublin by accident, I thought to myself, now there's a simple girl, gay as a bird, delighted when you pass her a second cake, busy all day and tired when she lies down at night. A simple, uncomplicated girl. I'll be like that again. No, you won't. Well, I'll try. He shook his head and I could see him thinking. It was all an illusion. It was the clear whites of your eyes and your soft voice and the chiffon scarf around your throat. They all gave me the wrong impression. Laura's reply came on Saturday. He did not show it to me, but in the afternoon when he went out... I found it on his desk and I read it. Eugene, my dear, I haven't written for months. We're both fine and the weather is marvellous. Of course, Simon has written and told me everything, including some trivial little incident about wrong cups. I always said you had a feudal attitude to women, and since then I've had your letter in which you say, I have met a girl, she is Irish and romantic and illogical. When is this film scheduled for? And are you going to South America first or here first? Let me know by return. I want to have everything nice for you. I've just finished a darling picture which I think expresses everything I have to say about life, the soul, neuroses, love and death. Elaine is asleep with her hand under her cheek. P.S. The thing that worries me is that Mom and Ricky and Jason and everyone think we are made for each other. What are you doing? It was just sitting there on your desk. You shouldn't have read it. Well, I'm very glad I did. You had no right. At least now I know what I let myself in for. Are you really going off to America to see her? Yes. (laughs) For pity's sake. What? Every time I look at you, you're crying. And if it's not about her, it's about something else. Your father or my mother or your mother. It was a shock. Well, you shouldn't have read it. You're so independent. Just don't tell me anything. So you want complete ownership of me? I didn't say that. One hour in bed and you want me to sign my life away? Oh, it's more than one hour. (laughs) Will you take me with you? Take you with me where? To America. Will you? No, I won't. Not in this state. Not until you grow up. (laughs) I went straight upstairs and began to pack. I had not many clothes, but still the bag was stuffed to capacity and the zipper would not close. The strap of my slip and the brassiere stuck out, and I had no money. Can I have a pound for my bus fare? Where are you going? Dublin. Can I have a pound, please? Here's five pounds. I only want a pound. You'll want your fare back again, won't you? I'm not coming back. Really? I think it's for the best. Do you want me to write to Laura and ask for a divorce? I don't know. I can see that not being married is offending your mortal soul. Will you just drive me to the bus, please? You'll give the wrong impression, you know, arriving at that dishevelled state. (laughs) Why don't you stay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You have to grow up, Kate. I know. Learn to control your emotions. I know. He had this amazing capacity for always seeming to be in the right. And I always felt sorry, no matter whose fault it was. Shall we have a cup of tea? All right. And you'll stay? I'll stay. Good. Did I ever tell you my motto? No. 
when about to cement fourth wife under the kitchen floor, pause and make tea. <laughs> that night when he loved me, I thought to myself, it is only with our bodies that we ever really forgive one another. The mind pretends to forgive, but it harbours and re-remembers in moments of blackness. And even in loving him, I remembered our difficulties. He, controlled, full of bile and intolerance, knowing everyone, knowing everything. Me, swayed or frightened by every wind, light-headed, mad in one eye, as he said, inbred, as he said again. I prayed to St. Jude, patron saint of hopeless cases. Everything was all right for four or five weeks. Eugene wrote to Laura about a divorce. And I wrote to my aunt to tell her I would soon be married. Then Baba came one weekday morning, which was unusual, as she usually came on a Sunday. I need to talk to you. It's urgent. Where's Chekhov? At a cattle fair. Haven't you got enough cows already? What did you want to talk about? I'm in trouble. What kind? Lord above, there's only one kind. Oh, Baba. Give me a fag. She hated pity and that slop of holding her hand. I told the man yesterday. What did he say? He took it very casually and said goodbye to me on top of a bus. See you around, he said. See you around? Have you got a drink? Yes, but he'll miss it. What does he do, measure the bottles? No, but... Then give us a bloody drink, will you? All right. Can't you do something? Do something. Do something. I've done everything there is to do took Glauber salts and dug the garden. Someone filled me up with gin in a basement in Baggett Street, but it made no bloody difference. When Eugene came home, Baba told him everything and he said, It's an historic day. Is it? I'll take some photographs. Photographs? To mark the occasion. We'll go out in the garden and hope for some sun. It doesn't look very sunny. And Baba. What? If nothing fortuitous happens, you can always come here and we'll have a harem. <laughs> <laughs> Baba cheered up after this and began to be quite impertinent with me. Do you still shave your chin? I've never shaved my chin in my life. Yeah, you have. Papa! Do you remember that time I had to bite one of your chin hairs off with my teeth? <laughs> Don't laugh. It's not true. She's making it all up. <laughs> it was raining when the postman called with two telegrams. Eugene and I were in bed in the middle of the afternoon. And I was embarrassed in case the postman should guess why we took so long to answer the door. One telegram was for me, and one was for him. Mine said, Cheers, the curse came. Stop. Going to England soon? Stop. It's only Baba. Panic over. Wish she'd worded it more discreetly. Mine's from Laura. What does she say? Oh, God. If you marry her, you will never see Elaine or me again. Stop. I promise you, stop. Laura, stop. But perhaps she doesn't mean it. Perhaps it's only words. <sighs> I watched him go down to the front field with his head down, and I thought, he's making a choice between me and them. And I wished that I could have a baby in some easy, miraculous way. He came back later with a bunch of red and white hawthorn in his arms. Beautiful, huh? Don't it in the house. It's unlucky. Don't be foolish, Kate. It's true. Fetch me the big vase, will you? For the next few days, he became a stranger. A mad martyr nailed to his chair, thinking and sighing and smoking. Then Simon the poet turned up with a tall American girl called Mary. What a beautiful place. Thank you. I think it's wonderful that you should come out here and bury yourself in this haven. Mm. So many smart men go to pieces nowadays that it's nice to see someone getting away from it all. <laughs> the Irish nearly had me in pieces. The Irish nearly crucified him. <laughs> <laughs> I hated Eugene for bringing this up so unnecessarily. Was it hatchets or pen knives? <laughs> Hobnailed boots. You were lucky they mm. didn't cut your balls off. <laughs> <laughs> Mary thinks we're joking. Kate... Yes? Do you have a comb? Uh, yes. I feel as if my hair must be wild. Oh, um... Her hair was not remotely wild. It looked as if she brushed it morning and night. In the bedroom, she smiled at herself in the mirror, and I asked stupid questions. 
Do you like Ireland? Uh, sure, I like Ireland. Do you miss America? I miss the pine trees. Oh. I'm from New England, and I miss the pines thrusting into the sky. I could have sworn she had learned that out of a book. Do you like clothes? Clothes? Yes. Doesn't everyone? She wore a pink seersucker shirt and flat shoes, and I felt that everything about her was calculated to appeal to Eugene. I was going to say to her then, don't hurt me, but I saw her redo her lipstick with a little brush, and it came to me that she was hard and clever. Oh, the ladies are back. This house has great charm, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I'm glad you think so. I looked around and realised that I'd contributed absolutely nothing to it. Not even a cushion. Mary happened to see one of your films at the National Film Theatre in London. Mm -hmm. Did you really? Yes, I thought it was darling. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what do you think of Eugene's films, Kate? Oh, she's never seen any. But I'm sure I will. How's New York these days? Oh, New York is awful. <laughs> awful? I prefer Europe. There's a much greater intellectual ferment here. All you painters and writers and artists, you're all much more embedded into your society. I mean, I met a bus conductor the other day who'd read James Joyce. Mm. That would never happen in New York. <laughs> no, perhaps that's true. Uh, have you ever been to America, Kate? Uh, no. No, I haven't. Well, not yet. B but I might go. Oh, good. When? Next year, perhaps? <clears throat> Over my dead body. I like that old song about stay as sweet as you are. <laughs> you must let a girl travel, Eugene. Mm, we'll see. Haven't you heard of women's liberation? Oh, I've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Then she hit him playfully with the tea cosy. Uh, you do remind me of somebody. Doesn't she just? Who? His old lady. <sighs> so she was like Laura. <laughs> Laura was like that. Bright and talkative. Throwing tea cosies with charm and not knocking anything over the way I would. They've gone. Good. You could have said goodbye. Are you in one of your... Emotional states. Yes, I am. What the hell is wrong with you? I like it when it's just us. But the world is not just us. The world is this girl coming and Simon and all the people you've met and all the people you will meet. I don't want to meet anyone. I don't know how to talk to people like that. They're just people. No, they're not. I don't know if I can do this. Do what? Your inadequacies. Your fears, your traumas. You're, you're so unready. For what? For life. What do you like teaching me? You said you did. Some girls, they wouldn't like it, but I don't mind you telling me about the Ice Age and evolution and auto-suggestion and profit motive. Maybe she wouldn't like you telling her things like that. Who wouldn't like me telling her things like that? Mary, the American. This is not about Mary. Yes, it is. Or it is a bit. I'm allowed to talk to other women. To like other women. But you like me. You like me in bed, don't oh, you? Oh, for God's sake. Sorry. sorry. Look, why don't you wash your face and do something? Sink your inadequacy into washing walls or mending my socks or conquering your briary nature. Are you seeing that girl again? Probably. Why not? She's with Simon. She's Simon's girl. Nothing's irrevocable. If you see her again, I'll go away and I won't come back. Well, then you may as well start packing now. Because I'm meeting them for lunch tomorrow. Where? Dublin. The Shelburne. In the morning, we did not speak. While he shaved, I put my suitcase in the trunk of his car and the marriage ring he had bought for me in the ashtray on his desk. I had a short letter in my bag ready to hand him when we got to Dublin. In the letter, I pretended I was going away forever. Look what the cat dragged in. Oh, my God. Have you filled up with baby? And that man sent you back to us? I just came back for a few days to help Baba pack and see her off. Mm, what the devil are you really doing here? He flirts with other women and says nothing is irrevocable. He calls me a barmaid and an inadequate and says I'm like a stone. My mother was damn right. All men are pigs. Oh, it's true. Smoking and drinking, shouting if I go cross. I myself have nerves and I cannot say anything. Come to England with me. We'll have a whale of a time. We'll become striptease girls in Soho. Striptease? Did your mother and father agree to you going away? It's very hot. I, I go make lemonade. I told them I was going to take up nursing. 
nursing. <laughs> but you won't see me changing sheets and shaving people's you-know-what. I'm going to Soho where there's life and you should come with me. No, no, I'm just waiting for him here. Here? He's having lunch at the Shelburne with a woman called Mary and a man called Simon. I expect he'll be here by about half past three. But by half past four, he still hadn't arrived. Do you want to get a drink? More lemonade? A drink. Look at her. Her hands are shaking. I have homemade advoca. That'll have to do. And I'll go out and look for him. Perhaps he didn't get my letter. Perhaps he didn't. He always, always forgets Joanna's number. I fetch you a drink. I took my advocate into the back room where Joanna kept preserved eggs and apples on the window ledges. Papa should be back by now. I said it to the plaster nymph in the fireplace, whose cheeks Joanna rouged from time to time because everything got mildewed in that room. Eventually I heard Baba return. Come upstairs. Is he outside? Just come upstairs, will you? She linked me upstairs to the bedroom which I used to share with her. She closed the door. He's gone home. He isn't coming for me? He isn't coming for you. Has Mary gone with him? That moron. You said she was good looking, but she's only in a halfpenny place next to us. I cut her dead. But has she gone home with him? No, she was drunk and that spy with the beard. Simon. Is that his name? He had to take her home. Wow, he says to me. Bow wow, I says back to him. You're too soft with those sharks. I know. What did Eugene say? I told him you were here and he said, naturally. Naturally? Oh, he's a smug bastard sometimes. He is. He ordered me a brandy and when the other two went off, I told him you were in a state. And what did he say? He said he'd made his mind up about you. He says old men and young girls are all right in books, but not anywhere else. You're to stay here. <sighs> Till maybe you're grown up and he's made his film about irrigation or whatever the hell it's about in America. Are you up the pole or anything? No. Oh. Don't have a nervous breakdown on me or convulsions oh. or anything. Don't go off your head. Oh, I'm entitled to a nervous breakdown. What is happening? She's just having a cry. But well, take the spread off the bed before she ruins it with her shoes. She could just take her shoes off. Oh, that would do it. Take your shoes off, Kate. A little bit hysterical, eh? Our friend Tom Higgins got put in Grange Gorman for a lot less. He kissed a strange nun on O'Connell Bridge because she reminded him of his dead sister. His sister died of TB in the bed next to me in the sanatorium. And before that, his brother got killed in Spain. Oh, my God. Oh. What are you doing? I'm going to Eugene. I'm going to no, him. No, you're not. I'm going to him. He doesn't want you, Kate. He does. He does, he does, he does want me. <laughs> then Gustav came in and opened his mouth with shame and wonder when he saw me kneeling on the floor crying. <laughs> Miss Kathleen, who is so gentle. I was gentle, but I'm not anymore. I'm debased because of some damn man. Come on, Kate. I get you some pills. I get you a whiskey. I slept with Baba in the single bed, and once in near sleep I thought that her arm around my stomach was his arm, and I woke relieved, only to face the truth again. I stayed awake then, my mind muddled from pills and whiskey and crying. In the morning, I went to the phone booth at the end of the road and tried to call the house. Hello? Anna, it's Kathleen. Is he there? Can I speak to him? He's gone away. Gone away where? He, he didn't say. Well, when will he be back? He didn't say... Do you think he's just gone for a bit of fishing? Could be that. Or do you think he went to London? Uh, could be that too. Well, did he take a lot of things with him? No. So most likely he's just gone for the night? Uh, no, because he never takes a lot of things with him, whether he's going for a night or a fortnight. I thought then, I'll be out of my mind if I have to wait a whole fortnight. going this Friday. I know you are. For God's sake, don't stop me. I'm not going to stop you. Don't ask me to stay and nurse you. I won't. I've wanted to go for months and I don't want anything or anyone to prevent me. No one is going to prevent you, least of all me. Oh, why don't you come with me? I can't leave Eugene. Eugene? Eugene? You've already left him or he's left you or it's a bit of both. He's going to come for me. And supposing he doesn't? 
He'll come for me. And if he doesn't? He will. Well, I'm going on Friday, so if you don't come then, you lose your chance. Then I'll have to miss my chance. Ah, say you'll come with me. Say you will. I can't. Shall we make a deal? What sort of deal? If you don't hear from him by Thursday night, then you'll come with me to England. All right. Oh, great. But I'll hear from him. I will. But if you didn't... I wrote to him, telling him I was going away. I marked the letter, urgent and personal. And making plans to go gave me something to think about. Also, I thought it would prove to him how independent I was. I told my mother to tell your father that you'd left Eugene and that you were going to England with me. My mother wanted us both to go home for a few days, but I told her there was no time when I bought the tickets. Have you? Have I what? Bought the tickets? Oh, not yet, but she doesn't know that, does she? I suppose not. Two days later, my father sent me a letter praising me for being so loyal to the family and giving me £50. £50? Aye. Who did he nick that off? Probably my cousin Andy. Oh, we could travel first class. I know Eugene is going to come. You haven't heard a word from him. But I will, I will do. What makes you so sure? Because if I don't, if I don't, it makes everything meaningless between us. Well, maybe everything was meaningless between you. Don't say that. I wrote to him again, asking him to have a drink with us to say goodbye. I heard nothing. When we're in London, you can write to him again. He's bound to come over and take us out for big dinners and talk down to you and make you feel like an idiot. And you'll wonder why you cried all week over the big man. To everyone but Baba, I kept up the pretense that I was leaving. But I knew that just as I was about to get on the ship, he would be standing there, mournful on the quay. He would tap me on the shoulder and say, Kate. And I would turn around to him. Eugene. Hello, darling. Even though he had never called me darling. Not once. You came. Of course I came. Didn't you know I would? I did. I did know. Any post to Anna? No, no letters today. Kathleen, stop moping. We're going out. Going out where? You need new underwear and new clothes and new hair. I can't afford that. Your father's just given you £50. I need that in case. In case what? I don't know. I'm not going to London with you looking like a bog Irish country girl. But that's what I am. Well, you needn't look like one. And I'm not going to London anyway because Eugene is coming for me. <coughs> well, he's taking his bloody time about it. And then you go, you leave me some of your old clothes, eh? And your old perfume... What kind of thing were you wanting? Give her something interesting and sophisticated. I don't want something interesting and sophisticated. Don't listen to her. Listen to me. Eugene always said he didn't want me to get sophisticated. Can you stop thinking about him for one minute? No, I can't. So what do you want exactly? She doesn't know what she wants. Can you make her look like Grace Kelly? I can try. Grace Kelly doesn't have red hair. I know she doesn't. Dope. After this, it's underwear. Her underwear is an absolute disgrace. It is not. It is so. Grey where it used to be white with the elastic showing here and there. Don't go around telling everyone that. I'm not telling everyone. I'm only telling your hairdresser. You're not everyone, are you? Well, I like to think I'm not. So, there you are. But it's not true. What's not true? What you just said about my underwear. Oh. Show the woman your brassiere. What? Show the hairdresser your brassiere you're wearing right now. No! <laughs> you won't do it because it would prove my point. I won't do it because you're raving. You are raving. I, I, I'll just go and fetch a gown. Thank you. On our last day, we ran around saying our goodbyes. And Baba half filled three perfume bottles with water to keep Joanna happy. Ah, oh, you girls. You girls are good to me, really. <laughs> a taxi came for us at six. Ah. I come with you. Wave goodbye. We're meeting the body at the pub on the quay. Then I come with you to pub. <laughs> come on, then. Just a minute. What are you doing? Leaving you, Tina, no. Oh, Egypt. I stuck the note on Joanna's door. Gone to pub opposite boat, so he'd know where to find us. How do they get those ships in those bottles, do you think? What? How 
do they get those ships in those bottles, do you think? I don't know. There must be a trick to it. Yeah. But what is it? What is the trick? <laughs> I don't know. Ah, but do you know? I have no bloody idea and I don't care either. <laughs> right. Kate, you're not drinking. Why aren't you drinking? Drink your drink. What is it? Rum and lemon. I don't like rum and lemon. Get it down, you. Get it down, you, Kate, for God's sake. <laughs> I would like to make toast. My God, yeah. yes. To Baba and Kathleen. Two noble women. Yes. Let her finish. Sorry, Joanna. May they be happy in England mm. and let no man break their hearts no more. I'll drink to that. Cheers. 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 Mm. I'm going to ring him. Who? Oh, who do you bloody well think? Mm. Don't ring him. Don't ring him. I've got you. My God. Ring him. Ring him then. There's no one stopping you. Hello? Anna, it's Kate. I need to speak to Eugene. He's not here. He's out in the field. Uh, will you tell him? Will you tell him I called? I will. I'm going to England. When? Now. What, tonight? Tonight? I wrote to him, I told him. Oh, will you do me a favour? What? I'm up the pole. Oh. Is there any chance you could get me some pills in England? I'll try. Please, please, promise you will. Did he get my letters? Uh, he did, but he didn't open them. They're sitting on his desk untouched. So he doesn't know? He doesn't know I'm leaving? I don't suppose he does. Oh, Anna, Anna, please, run to the field and tell him. Tell him where I am and when I'm leaving. He could still get here before the boat goes. He could still get here. I'll tell him. I'll tell him. Please. All right. Oh, Anna. What? Has Mary been there? Who? The American girl. Oh, her. Has she been to see him? No one's come, no one, except the rat man. It's like a monastery since you left. Will you send me the pills, please? Yes, yes, if you run to the field now. I came away feeling worse than ever. Excuse me? Ah, uh, yes, miss. If a man called Eugene Geyer comes looking for me, will you tell him I got on the boat? What? If a man called Eugene Guyard comes in here to find me, will you tell him I had to get on the boat? What's your name? Kathleen. Kathleen Brady. He'll be here. He'll be here soon, I've no doubt. He's um, a tall, thin man, wears a lot of black, a melancholy face, but handsome. About uh, 35 years old with a ball patch, but not so as you notice it straight away. Sometimes I think he looks like a statue. Or a god. Uh, right you are. Will you look out for him? For a man who looks like a statue or a god? Yes. Uh, I'll do me best. I'm sure if he comes, you'll know him. You'll know him straight away. You can't miss him, really. The body and Joanna came with us to look at the boat. Baba held her ticket between her teeth as her hands were occupied with flowers and travel bags and a new raincoat. Walking across the gangway, I thought, I can still go back and wait for him because he's coming. Get a move on, can't you? Sorry, sorry. Walking at a snail's pace. Come on, please. Cheer up. It's very nice, this cabin. There's barely room to swing a cat. <laughs> Why do you want to swing a cat in here? Have a drink of whiskey. Oh, no, thank you. I don't want the germs. And she's already merry enough on the sherries. Ooh. Drink, Kate. All right. Can you not cheer up, Kathleen? It's good. You are going away. Oh, do you remember when Joanna sprayed the body with the fire extinguisher because no. she thought he was a thief? <laughs> I certainly remember it. <laughs> yes, it's very funny. Oh, you didn't think so at the time? Oh, no. <laughs> Baba, Kathleen, your health, your fortune, <laughs> stay as sweet as you are and don't let her thing ever change you. <laughs> then he lifted Baba into the air. <laughs> what are you doing, you fool? <laughs> <laughs> All those aboard who are not travelling, please disembark. Holy Moses, oh. we'll have to swim the channel. Oh my God, what would Gustav say? <laughs> Joanna and the body scrambled to the door and left us with crushed roses and a half a bottle of whiskey with the damp of their various mouths on its neck. He never came. Oh, Kate. I'll go mad. I'll go mad. No, you won't. I will, I swear. Wait till we get to England. Everything is freer there. We'll have a whale of a time. I'll never forget him. There's no one asking you to. There was another announcement from the ship's loudspeaker and I listened, trembling, in case it might be him. Would Mrs Rose Connolly please come to the purse's office? But it wasn't. Would you know by looking at me that I had a past? 
You'd know you hadn't had a decent night's sleep for about six months. <clears throat> That's what you'd know. What are you doing? What are you doing? I want the steward to come. What for? For the hell of it. Baba. <clears throat> come in. Yes, madam? Hello there. Hello. What can I do for you? Oh, I just did it for the gas. Sorry? <laughs> to see if you'd come. And you did. He looked around at the chaos of our cabin. Bags scattered on the floor, flowers everywhere, me crying, Baba nursing the whiskey bottle. Then he shook his head and left. Baba. What? What do you think? Who cares what he thinks? And if he wants a tip tomorrow, he better watch out or he'll get nothing. Oh, a pity beyond all telling is hid in the heart of love. Are you reciting those mortuary cards again? He always washed his own socks and made metal things to keep them from shrinking. And he boiled his corduroy pants one day and they shrank so he had to use them on a scarecrow. I'll tell you something interesting. What? I think he was touched and you're better off without him. We're off. Oh, oh let's run and wave to them. She led me by my hand as we ran up on deck to see the last of Dublin. There they are! <gasps> Joanna and the body were still on the quay, waving hats and hands and the evening papers. Bye! But there was no sign of Eugene. Oh, the body is sincere. Oh, he is that. Look at the water all being churned up. What about it? It's like a thousand lavatories flushing. <sighs> he didn't come. No, he didn't. I saw our friends waving us away. The cranes and anchored ships the long, uninspiring stretch of quay which we rode past. And gradually the city of Dublin started receding into the mauve twilight of a May evening. I brought pills in case we puke all over the damned ship. If I'm sick, it'll spoil everything. Oh, remind me to take a few towels. I knew if anyone was to save me from going mad, it would be Baba, with her maddening chattering. We're on our way! We're on our way! <laughs> Yippee! The ship, which was called Hibernia, moved steadily forward through the black night towards the dawn of Liverpool. Kate was played by Charlie Murphy, Eugene by Jonathan Forbes, Anna, Catherine Cusack, Dada, David Ganley, Jack Holland, John Joe O'Neill, Tom, Paul Hickey and Andy, Sean Mason. It was dramatised by Katie Hims and directed by Sally Avons and Jessica Dromgall. Jessica Dromgall. Jessica Dromgall. Jessica Dromgall. Jessica Dromgall. Jessica Dromgall. Jessica Dromgall.